Yeah, so some of the engineering challenges in developing, first looking at the micro subwoofer, uh, we really wanted to see how much we can reduce the size of the cabinet and still create real, honest subwoofer performance. And so with the SB and PB3000 series, we knew we had developed a, a high current, high power 800 watt RMS amplifier. So that was gonna be the power delivering to the system. And then we knew that we, the only way that we could really capture that energy and put it into real low frequency extension was by developing an all new eight inch driver, putting two of them in, in this enclosure in a force canceling uh, parallel alignment. So th that combination creates an ecosystem where we could actually drive high output at low frequency and, tr and go through this exercise to compress the size as much as possible. Um, among those challenges were also, how do we put that 800 watt amplifier in such a small enclosure? So the 3000 micro amplifier, the plate actually wraps fully from the back of the panel all the way underneath and that basically allows us to capture all of the, the thermal constraints and capture all the power output of that amplifier in the smallest possible enclosure. So in-wall product have a, have a critical, const critical constraint. It has to fit into a standard stud bay, which is typically 16 inches on center between the studs and only the, the depth that's allowed in the wall. So in the case of a subwoofer, which really wants cabinet volume uh, to, to allow the drivers to make real low frequency extension, we really had to, to attack this challenge of cabinet volume in a different way. So in the case of the 3000 in-wall, we developed brand new, totally custom nine inch drivers. There's two active drivers in this cabinet and the enclosure is actually formed sheet aluminum on the front and rear panels. And that nets us and captures a lot of cabinet volume that would normally be lost if you made the whole enclosure out of MDF or, or some other material. And again, like the 3000 micro, we knew we had a fantastic power delivery system with the 800D2 amplifier, 800 watts RMS power to, to capture all of the SBL output and now with the cabinet volume, the low frequency extension to make a real subwoofer performance out of an in-wall subwoofer that doesn't take up the whole stud bay. Uh, it's actually totally retrofit friendly. With smaller subwoofers, there's a tendency that with all the energy and of the drivers that they'll kind of walk around and start moving around on the floor. We wanted to make sure that we address that. And that was another reason to have two active drivers. So they are electrically and mechanically in parallel with each other. So every bit of the force and energy that they basically project into the cabinet and into the enclosure is equal and opposite from the other driver, fully canceling in the cabinet. So when this subwoofer is making prodigious amounts of bass and, and digging deep in, in, uh, low, in low, deep frequency, uh, there's no mechanical energy in the cabinet. And so that keeps it rock solid on the ground and uh, to basically feels like it's completely inert. In the case of the 3000 in wall, we had to address that mechanical energy in a different way. So we took a lot of time to look at the, the damping materials inside, but also making sure that's a fully uh, inert enclosure. Another benefit of the sheet aluminum front baffle and rear baffle is that those are very inert materials, but also it created a, a, a full depth lattice structure where every bit of the, the, the screws and the, bind, the posts inside the cabinet go from the front to the back and creates a, a really inert sandwich. So the, the entire enclosure is really inert. Go left.